have a question for you. Who are you? I don't mean what's your name or who do you think the world wants you to be. I mean what defines you? What makes you happy? How do you want to spend your time? Who do you want to spend your time with? And what do you want to accomplish? I'll tell you who I am, who I really am. I am a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, sister, a friend, and I am a girl who has always been drawn to stories, hearing them, sharing them, and writing them. At a very young age, I fell in love with small rhyming books and songs that to me carried great big messages. I can still remember the first time I heard the lyrics by Dr. Seuss. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clasp. Christmas Day will always be, just as long as we have we. I heard those words, and even then, I knew I wanted to do that. But that is just part of who I am, part of what defines me. I am at my best when I am managing projects with crazy details. I am truly happy when I see people accomplish things they never thought they could. And I can't stop myself from finding stories and inspiration and lessons all around me. And that is what happened when I was watching Scooby-Doo with my kids one day. Because it hit me that I believe deep down we all know who we want to be, but we face these monsters along the way, and we need to unmask them so we can live the lives we are meant to. But how do you do it? Where do you start? Well, you have to begin with the biggest, strongest, toughest monster, the 10,000-volt ghost of monsters. And I have named this monster the Confidence Creeper. A uh, side note here, another thing that defines me is I like to name things and then define them, so hang with me. Okay, the confidence creeper is a monster who wants you to lack self-confidence, to doubt yourself, to think you need to change to be like everyone else. And the way to unmask this monster is to know, yes, you are different, that's what makes you special, that's what makes you valuable, and you want to stay true to yourself. Of course, we're all going to change and grow, and that's great, but I am talking about sticking to your inner core. Let's talk about Freddie, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby. They all look completely different, different styles, different things they are good at, different things they don't like to do or they struggle with, but do they ever change to conform to one another? No. I mean, Literally, no, they don't even change their clothes, <laughs> which is a strong statement. Take Freddie. He is your all-American, guy-next-door leader, likes to set traps. Daphne, fashion-conscious, prone to danger, likely to be kidnapped. Velma, incredibly studious. She never apologizes for how intelligent she is or for her haircut which is also very brave. <laughs> then you've got Shaggy. He's a laid-back hippie, goes with the flow, sometimes scared, but works through it. And then you've got Scooby, your typical loyal, tail-wagging, hungry dog. These characters are the definition of being confident and comfortable in your own skin. They know who they are, they know what they want to do, and they own it. I struggled with the confidence creeper in my life, because I have gone on to write books and songs for children. I have a job where I get to share great stories and manage details. But there were times when I downplayed my enthusiasm and my talent because I was seeing things so differently than others. So I made excuses for myself, I made excuses for them. And then I realized that the people in my life and the people who gave me those opportunities needed me to be me, the girl who is excited, who finds the positive in things, who see things differently, and tries to inspire others. And it felt so good when I ripped that mask off and I was true to myself and authentic. 
And in this instance, I feel like you are also unmasking a good monster, which I have named the Bring It On Beast, because I believe there is a monster in all of us waiting to get out and show the world what we can do. Okay, so you are confident, and then you are ready to unmask the closed-minded monster. This monster wants you to be judgmental and have very narrow vision. Let's talk about Freddy and the gang again. Not only are they completely comfortable with who they are, but they are willing to accept the differences in each other and work together. And not just accept them, but embrace those differences and realize that those differences make them stronger as a team. So when you have an open mind, you are able to surround yourself with people, both personally and professionally, who you may have never thought you would connect with. And they can become a huge part of your life. But you have to be willing to it, to do it, and you have to be, you have to value them and what they bring. Being judgmental doesn't just apply to people, it applies to situations. How many times in the Scooby-Doo episodes did you want to think it was the creepy character or butler who did it? But often it wasn't the case. I find when people make knee-jerk reactions, it rarely goes well. And I also find when I give someone the benefit of the doubt and let the situation unfold, I'm glad I did that, and so are they. And they are more likely to show me the same courtesy. Okay, so now we are confident. We are surrounding ourselves with great people, and that leads to forming a real team. And it will also lead you to unmasking the too cool ghoul. This is a monster who wants you to think, I am calm, I am cool, I've got it all under control, and I do not need to ask for help from anyone. Not a great idea. I struggled with this one also, because I do, I like to manage all those details, and I, I want to have a little bit of control of everything. But I realized that it's not realistic to think you can do everything. It's not the best use of your time. And it goes back to valuing others. Let those people shine, and you will shine. I love it in the uh, Scooby-Doo movies when, or in the episodes when Shaggy yells out, Scooby-Doo, where are you? And all of a sudden you see Scooby-Doo coming around the corner with his paws and he picks up Shaggy and they go off. And then here comes the band, the mystery machine, and they all jump in and they swoop off to safety. You have to be willing to ask for help. And when you're asked for help, you have to be willing to come running. Another side note here, I need my teenage daughter to understand it will never be okay to be picked up in a van. I feel, I feel like she's going to use that part of my speech against me one day. Okay, so now you have this strong team and you are ready to get to work. And you are also ready to unmask the good enough ghost. This is a ghost who wants you to think, it's okay, good enough, I'll settle for fine. It is one thing to have a good idea, and it is an entirely different thing to take that good idea, make it great, and see it through. Too many times we settle for okay. But how do you unmask this monster? You have to be willing to do things that scare you. Did it ever look like Shaggy and Scooby wanted to go into that eerie house or mansion that was clearly haunted? No. I was truly scared to pitch a TED talk that talked about cartoon characters. But here we are. If you don't take the steps that scare you, you will always wonder, could I have, should I have? And I will live with fear over regret all day long. Another thing you have to do to unmask the good enough ghost is be curious, be meddlesome, be willing to search for clues. You don't want to be good at what you do. You want to be great at what you do. You want to be the best. So many times the easy thing is to quit or to say, good enough. Do not settle. All right, now you're taking the scary steps and you are going to face the next monsters. This one is plural because there are a lot of them. They are the zap you zombies. And these zombies 
literally want to zap you of your time and your talent. They are the finger pointers, the doubters. They are negative. They want you to feel bad and make you explain what you're doing. Please, please trust me. The way to unmask these zombies is to understand that they have something going on in their world they're not quite happy with, something going on that they are trying to project into yours. Think of all of the characters that Scooby-Doo and the gang unmasked. It was always someone like, like Hank, the minor 49er, who he wanted that oil, the money, and so he created a scheme about gold, and he wreaked havoc on a town instead of taking some positive steps, pointing the finger at him, maybe getting a job, and, and understanding that he had something going on in his life. Let those people keep their negative noise, their negative theme music. You've got work to do. And I mention music because I think it might be the best part of the Scooby-Doo series. I love the music for the monster scenes, and I feel that we all carry our own theme music in our lives. So the Zappy Zombies are probably like, womp, 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 when they walk in a room, and then there's drama people, they're like, ah. You want to surround yourself with people who maybe their theme music is calm and focused and serene. Maybe it's uplifting and energetic, or maybe it's just happy and fun. Which leads us to our final unmasking of the no fun phantom, which is actually a fun one to unmask, so that's ironic. The no fun phantom wants you to be all work and no play. Not good. You have to find balance in your life, or you will burn out, and you will drive the people around you crazy. So you want to find a treat, your Scooby snack, your reward for working hard, for taking risks. It can be something very simple. I, mean, I look forward to coffee in the morning, or maybe I know I'm going to get to watch a movie that week with my family, or maybe it's a trip, or yoga, or running but find something to help you balance your life. For, you know, for Shaggy and Scooby, it's the six-foot hoagies and pizza. You will find something that lets you have that balance so you can work hard and you can reward yourself. I love at the end of the Scooby-Doo episodes when the bad guys don't get away with it and the good guys get to go to the mall shop. Blow off some steam. So I'm going to ask you again, who are you? What is it that you want to do? Deep down, you know what makes you tick. You know what makes you smile. You need to own your passion, your talent, your style. Yes, there will be monsters along the way, the good and the bad. But you can unmask them. You control if you are happy or sad. And when you are confident and comfortable, in your own skin, be open and willing to let people in. So many times, appearances and situations can be deceiving. Facts and character are what you should be believing. Be smart. Make benefit of the doubt fundamental. As Walt Whitman said, be curious, not judgmental. Think of the gang and Scooby-Doo. You could not find a more unlikely crew. But together, they always get the job done. They work hard, they support each other, and they have fun. And fun is important. You have to identify your Scooby snack, your treat. It could be a trip, a walk, a glass of wine, or something sweet. Whatever it is, you need that balance so you can let the good monster out. You want to unleash the beast that makes you shout, I am me, I am here, and I am going to be great at what I do. I won't settle, I'm meddlesome, and I will search for every clue. I will do things that scare me because I know I can. And there are people in my life who are a part of my plan. And when it comes to my people, my gang, there is no mystery. I can call them, and they can call me, and we come running. 
And when I run, my theme music is not doom and gloom. I arrive positive and ready to rock the room. So start unmasking bad monsters left and right. The finger pointers, the doubters, the boo-hooers, those who judge on sight. Approach your life and work with a kind but fierce hunger and thirst. And never forget that the good monsters, the good guys, can finish first. Thank you.